Yeah, it's Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So a couple of weeks ago, I let you in on uh, the news that I'm going to be testing out some uh, Xantrex equipment. Um, I, I purchased and used a Xantrex uh, inverter in the boat and was contacted by the company and asked if I'd like to test out some of their equipment for the RV. So I'm testing out their 240 amp hour lithium batteries and also a 3000 watt inverter. And this video, I'm back with a more in-depth, uh, I kind of gave you a sneak peek here of the batteries and kind of a look at my new off-grid system that I'm building around them. But in this uh, video, I'm going to go and give you an in-depth uh, test on, and we're going to give you a discharge, charge test, and capacity test, that sort of thing, and kind of show you exactly how they're going to be mounted. And also take the lid off, and we'll see what's inside these batteries. Uh, so let's get to it. So I've got things hooked up to do a little bit of a capacity test here and a maximum discharge test. First thing I've done is I made sure this is fully charged. It's a little lithium battery charger here. And you can see I've got a battery monitor hooked up here. And we're at 14.53 volts. So we're fully charged. And I've hooked up an inverter so that I have something to draw a load out of it. And we got a heat gun and a, and a heater so I can get uh, up to over 150 amps. So that's its max discharge is 150 amps. Max continuous discharge rate. Recommended discharge current is equal to or later, equal to or less than 120 amps. But uh, we're going to give her a test here. So we'll start with a max discharge test. Turn on the inverter here. And crank on one of the heaters. We're at 900 watts here. Right now we're drawing 68 amps out of it. Full. 119 amps. Voltage is measuring 12.6 volts. Put the heat get on now. 128. Still handling it fine, 12.5 volts. Put it up a little bit more here. There we are, right around 150 there. that go for a little while. So I've had that running for a few minutes. Handles it's no problem. So it also says it should be able to handle up to 300 amps for three seconds max. I'm going to start cranking up this heat gun and then we'll see when it shuts down. over 180 now. There's 200. There we go. So yeah, it's kind of working as advertised as far as max discharge. Now you can see we got some error lights there. We've got a red one and then a flashing green. So let's check the manual on that. Yeah, manual says that means overcurrent protection, so makes sense. There we go, should be back in business. Just turn things down here. Okay, no harm done.
Okay, so I fully recharged the battery again. I'll give it a bit of a capacity test here. Turn on my inverter again. And we'll run 600 watt load. About 45 amps. Let's see how long that lasts. I set this up for 240 amp hours. It's calculated and should last about 5 hours and 11 minutes. It'll be interesting to see how many amp hours we'll get out of it. Checking in just over 3 hours. Showing about 91 amp hours left. Shows 37%. Uh, still holding pretty steady. 600 watts. We'll keep her going. Okay, getting pretty close to the four hour mark here. You can see my battery monitor showing 26% left when I based it on 240 amp hours of capacity. Um, the actual Bluetooth app for the battery itself is showing 18% in left. The voltage is around 12.8. Interesting, it's not, not getting very warm in there at all. The battery temperature is showing 62.6 Fahrenheit and the BMS temp showing 68.9 Fahrenheit. So it's staying pretty cool. It's still powering 600 watts. So I'm not sure about the discrepancy here. I'll just let her go and I'll make sure to record when it uh, exhausts itself so we can kind of see which one is more accurate here. So we've now gone over 200 amp hour mark. This is where I would probably be inclined to be wanting to recharge my battery system. This is showing 9%, this is showing 15%. Normally you wouldn't want to exhaust your battery could start charging it, but since this is a test, I'll uh, let her go and see when it dies. So it's pulling 600 watts, and the way a lithium battery discharges, right after it gets to down around uh, 10 or 20 percent left, it starts to really roll over. You can see the voltage dropping over here. It's 12.63. That's what it's showing. So normally the lithium battery would be up near 13 and it'll stay flat around 13 for a long time and then it starts to roll off and that's when it is really starting to get to near the end of its uh, capacity. Like you can lower the wattage down to say, you know, 50 watts and then the voltage pops up and the battery lasts longer but uh, I always like to see how far it can go with, say, a 600 watt load. Just so people know, basically, the real world uh, effective use of the battery is. Like, say, at this point you wanted to pull your slides in or use your landing jacks. You can still put out 600 watts, so you could still do that. Um, but you get too much lower and... Uh, it's not able to do that, so it's really a moot point if it can go a way lower but put out less current. At least in my mind. Okay, so we just went past 230 amp hours that we've used at a 600 watt load, about 10 amp hours left in the battery. My battery monitor is saying 4%, the app is saying 2%, and we've just gone under 12 volts. So now the, the current is starting to go up and the voltage is dropping. This is usually where it trails off pretty quick the point that the inverter will shut down usually before the battery. Well, the app just went to 0%, but it's still discharging. Showing 11.5. It's 
surprised my inverter hasn't complained yet. Pretty impressed with the battery temperature inside. It's only 68.9 Fahrenheit battery temp. BMS temp 72.5, so basically not heating up at all in there. Power output starting to drop now. No longer maintaining 600 watts. But we just went over the five hour mark. So 600 watts times five hours is 3,000 watts. That's about what this battery capacity is rated at. So I'll give it high marks for being able to do 600 watts in five hours. Looks like it's got some pretty good cells in there and a pretty good BMS. Well, I'm going to call it there. Turn the load down now. There you can see I've, now the heater's just running its little fan. Doesn't take much wattage at all. But you can see the voltage starting to come up. So if I ran it like that, I could probably eke out those last few amp hours. So. Looks like it does have its rated capacity. Now that I've ran the battery down and the cells are depleted in there, I think I'm going to uh, give you a look at the build quality. We'll have a look at the outside case and then I'll take the top off and we'll see what's inside this puppy. Okay, so let's get a closer look at this battery. It's an all metal case. And by the magnet, even the top is all metal, which is nice. And then they've put in some really nice handles on both sides, heavy duty handles, which is handy because this thing comes in at about 70 pounds. So when you move it around, you might want to have a helper. Comes with some uh, terminal protectors here. They're kind of lightweight, but the terminals are nice. These are the same terminals that uh, I found in the SOK batteries, which I really liked. And they come with some uh, nuts for them, although they're a little short. I actually told them they should supply longer ones too, because once you stick, you know, a big uh, lug connection on there, there's not a lot of room. You, once you put two of them on, say you're going to parallel these batteries. So it'd be nice to have a longer one, although you can get your, your own. It goes down fairly deep. And then on the bottom here, a few different things. They have an on-off switch, which is nice. So you can turn the power to the battery on and off. You can see it's just flashing very low here because we exhausted it in the last test. But it'll show you the how much uh, juice you have in the batteries. And it also will give you uh, error messages here. Then over here, there's a communications port. All I could find for that is it allows you to have remote, like wired remote operation of the power switch and the, the LED readouts there. Um, maybe they use that in diagnostic operations at their factory. But they did say that there could be more stuff coming out. They could use that port to add different accessories onto the battery, maybe in the future. Anyway, let's get a, get the cover off and we'll get a look inside. Wow. I have to say I'm very impressed with the construction of this battery. Looks like there's some kind of like a cardboard on the top here. Probably just to protect metal from in here. And right here, there's a kind of a, a heat sink and wiring to it. And I believe that's the Bluetooth. I think there's an opening under there so that the Bluetooth can get out from the metal case. As far as wiring, we have a big three gauge positive conductor and then the negatives are four 10 gauge and they're 200 rated 200 Celsius wiring. Really nice wiring. Everything is put together really nice. It's like there's 
four big cells in there standing upright. Then on each end there appears to be kind of a, an aluminum heat sink on each end here. If you can see in there. There's the BMS on top. It says 150 amp, 240 amp hour. Looks like a pretty nice BMS. And then it's mounted on a, a metal board here. And there's a pretty thick kind of fiber board going between the BMS and the cells below. Another big heat sink on this side. And really nice connections. And then down here, I even see a big Class T fuse. Looks like 250 amp fuse. Wow. Yeah, you can see, you know, the battery is much more expensive than a lot of the low-priced stuff that you see on Amazon, but the build quality is night and day. A lot of the batteries I've looked at, like the Amper Time and the Chins and stuff, they're kind of wrapped in fiber paper and taped together. This one's really built. This is kind of built kind of like the SOK battery systems. Anyway, maybe somewhere down the road I can I'll do a big teardown of it but I don't want to damage anything before I get a chance to really put these batteries to the test out dry camping but you can see everything is screwed and bolted together so the battery looks quite serviceable so let's sew her back up and we're going to put it back into the camper and I'm going to try charging it at its max 150 amp charge level and I have the Xantrix uh, inverter charger that can put 150 amps so we'll see how they mesh together as far as recharging this thing. Screws are nice. Nice countersunk. Yeah the attention to detail is really good with this battery. If you look at the bottom here, it's just flat. And then they have the holes in there. So you can mount it straight up and down, or you can mount it on its side. So before I put this battery back in, I'll kind of show you how I have it uh, mounted in my uh, fifth wheel front storage compartment. I did a video recently of my, my system right now and how everything is hooked together. But as far as the battery mounting goes, I have like a metal belly pan. So I just took some uh, tech screws, self-tapping tech screws, and went through the, the mounting holes. First I put it on kind of a underlay here, just to give a little protection between the metal. Also kind of keep it a little bit warmer. But I've done a test so far. We were here in uh, high elevations in California desert, and it got down to few degrees below zero and uh, in the morning I checked the battery it was outside it was about 28 degrees Fahrenheit but inside the battery is around 44 Fahrenheit because they do create their own heat when they're working so they kind of kind of keep themselves uh, a little bit warmer than outside ambient so I've never really had a problem because I migrate north and south and I don't see any any extreme temps the batteries themselves they have a protection where they won't charge much under uh, freezing but they will discharge all the way down to something like minus four fahrenheit which is like deep freeze temperatures so if you're going to be using them in a in a cold cold climate then you'd have to either take them inside mount them inside a climate controlled area of your rv or boat or you could wrap them in a blanket or something like that but like I say, I've, I've had lithium batteries in here for about five years, different types, and I've never had a problem with them not charging, just with the temperatures I see. Anyway, I'm just going to mount the second one back in place there. So yeah, the batteries are mounted in my fifth wheel storage compartment. You know, they warn against having excessive vibration with the batteries. 
but I haven't had any problems with other lithiums I've had in there. <clears throat> I do have a big uh, air bladder here and a shock, so there isn't too much uh, jolts or vibration in that compartment. Stuff isn't really ever fallen off or I haven't had any, any damage whatsoever, so I think they'd be okay, especially once I've seen inside there really built well so there shouldn't be any problems there. So I've hooked them up, turned off the other battery and started up this battery and the charger in the Xantrix was able to start up the battery even though it had been fully depleted. It was able to recognize that and start it up. Because this thing can have this thing has capable of a zero volt startup. So maybe give you a look at what's going on through the apps. Right now I just have it charging at 60 amps, so I'll bring that up higher and higher. And I put the apps on screen. Each of these has their own app. So I got the charger set for about 120 amps. Everything seems to be handling it fine. Let me show you the battery here. Charging up. So let's uh, max out the charger. And it should be maximum for the battery too. Go into here. Charge current 150. So that was interesting. So when I tried to go to 150 amps of charging, this one popped up an alert saying excessive charging current. And it went into kind of a protection mode. And funny enough, the other battery, even though it was turned off here, it turned on be some kind of communication going on. Anyway, I'll reset it again and we'll try again. Okay, well I reset it and uh, looked in the manual and 100 amps is the recommended charge setting. So I've set it at 100 amps. We'll see how that goes. Just give you a quick look at this is the Xantrex app to get at the batteries. So you find the battery serial number here hit that loads the data so gives you percentage what it's doing charging its voltage current wattage you know the incoming current is a hundred around 100 amps so wattage is 1339 gives you battery temp BMS temp over here monitor this gives you some software versions and stuff like that it's a pretty basic app but does what you need to do and then there's alerts so when that alert came up that said excessive charging and it shut the battery down that's where it showed up and then settings device does not support settings as far as the inverter goes I'm gonna have a full video on that and there actually is a video on my 2000 watt marine inverter that I bought and put on the boat in the summer. So I've already kind of gone through that, that app but you can see here it's showing 97 amps. Now it's fooled thinking the battery is 100% because this thing just goes by voltage. There's no shunt involved or anything. It tells me how much is coming off the grid. Right now I have it plugged into the grid so it's drawing 14.5 amps off the grid. So it looks like my uh, 2000 watt generator will be able to support the 100 amp charging level, which is nice. Be able to charge those batteries quite quick. So it's been running for about, say an hour or so now, constant 100 amp charge, getting to be about 50% full. So maybe I'll try bringing up the, the charge current again. Slowly coming up. Oh, same thing. Yeah, same thing happened. Other battery woke up, and this one went into a fault code here. Let's see what it did. Got a fault code. Excess charge current. 
reduce charging current to battery from all possible sources. Okay. So double checking the battery specifications here, I go down to recommended charge current less than or equal to 100 amps, but it says allowed max charge current 150 amps. So I wasn't able to get it up to 150 amps. Let's ch double check in the manual here. And it says same thing, recommended charge current 100 amps, max possible charge current continuous 150 amps. So I was able to do 120 amps, but I tried 130 and 150 and no dice and I was using their charger. So I'll uh, contact Xantrex and see what they have to say. Maybe it's some type of programming issue with, with the battery I got. But uh, anyway, I in the in reality, I'm never going to be charging at that rate. I have two of these in parallel. So even if I put a, 200 amps is an awful a lot of charging, I can only put 150 amp with my... Uh, with my uh, inverter charger and my solar, I'd be lucky to get 50 to 70 amps. So I think I'll be okay. But anyway, I'll check it out and report back to you. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Cheers, guys.